throw up your hands in the air. Lift your hands and sing hallelujah. to the Lord and give him glory exalt his name magnify his name worship him and give him glory give him praise 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 give him glory exalt the name of the Lord we call him Yeshua Amashiach you are the anointed one for the Lord has made you both Lord and Christ. You are Lord and Christ. You are Lord and Christ. You are Lord and Christ. We give you glory, we give you praise. We give you glory, we give you praise. Wave your hands to the Lord and bless Him. Wave your hands to the Lord and bless Him. He is Lord. He is Lord. Lord. He's Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Son of man, no compare to the Lord. Rato bokote lele bota Jesus. Rato bokote lele bota Jesus. Esop bota bote bokote lele bota Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wave your hands to Him. No matter the challenge, no matter what you are believing God for, Jesus is greater than it. His name is the only name that is given among men by which no matter the need or the desire of your heart, it can be met in that name. No name is greater. No name is higher. No name can do what his name can do. Lift your hands and bless him and give him glory. And give him praise and give him glory. Give him praise. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. In every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is 
We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, Jesus said something in John chapter 14 and verse 12. He said, if you believe 
in me. He said, the works that I do, shall you do also. He said, and greater works. You know, there's something about believing in Jesus. When you believe in his name, you believe it, that he can do what he said he can do. You believe that God has given him a name that is above all names. You believe that he just doesn't have the title. He has the authority. He has the power. He has the dominion. For the, kingdoms, for the kingdom is his. The power is his. The dominion is his. There's something about believing in the name of Jesus. He said, the works that I do shall you do also. He said, and greater works. And you know why Jesus said so? Because that's the substance of the gospel. Paul speaking in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, for it is the power of God on the salvation. Now listen, what makes the gospel powerful is not the statement. It is what happened at Calvary. That's why the gospel is powerful. So it's not the statement. So when we say the gospel of Christ, it's not the, it is not the, it is not the story or the telling or the words that you say, but the content of the gospel. The Bible said that the content of the gospel in itself is power. If only you know it. In other words, what happened at Calvary in the tomb and his resurrection, it was a power thing. It was just not just an ordinary thing. It was God's power on display. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because when you say gospel, I hear power. When you say gospel, I say power. I say the power of God at work in what is called the gospel. He said the gospel is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone that can dare believe the gospel. So I began to ask myself, I said, what then is the gospel? And then God took me to Romans chapter 10. If you start from verse 6, remember that he said in verse 17 of the scripture, he said, for daring is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The power of the gospel is that it reveals a kind of righteousness. It's called the righteousness of God. He began to speak about that righteousness in Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. He said, but the righteousness which is of faith, speak it in this wise. He said, say not in your heart, who shall ascend into the heaven, that is to bring Christ from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. He said, but what saith thee? He said, the word is nigh thee. Which word is that? He said, even in your mouth and in your heart. He said, the word of faith that we preach. Ask your neighbor what's in your mouth. Come on now, ask your neighbor what are you saying? What are you saying? The righteousness of faith is not a quiet righteousness. The righteousness of faith is a talking righteousness. It has something to say. Tell your neighbor, I have something to say. Say, I have something to say now what are you saying look at it in verse 9 what does the righteousness of faith say he says if you will confess with your mouth that this Jesus whom thou hast crucified God has made him Lord and Christ if thou shalt confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord what is the content of the gospel the enthronement of Jesus as Lord that's what makes the gospel powerful is that Jesus is Lord through what happened in the gospel. All right, Acts 2 and verse 36. He uh, said, No, assuredly, does this same Jesus uh, that was crucified, he uh, said, God has made him uh, both Lord and Christ. Uh, it means that if you are sick in your body, if Jesus is Lord, uh, he can take that sickness away. If you have a need, uh, if truly Jesus is Lord, uh, he can meet that need if you have a desire if truly Jesus is Lord he can meet that desire that you have is sure anymore whether do they still believe the gospel somebody said how do I know if I believe the gospel do you believe that Jesus is still Lord if you truly believe now it's easy to say yes but what are you trusting God for do you believe that Jesus is greater than your need do you believe that is the answer do you believe that is Lord do you believe that he can do it? Do you believe that he can answer your prayers? 
Somebody came to meet Jesus for healing one day. And Jesus said to him, he said, do you believe that I can do this? He said, Lord, I believe. God said, that's your passport. That's your passport. Do you believe I can? 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 Jesus is asking someone here today, do you believe that I can? And that's why, what are you saying? The righteousness of faith is always saying that Jesus is Lord. The righteousness of faith is always saying, no matter how big the problem is, my Jesus is bigger. No matter how great the challenge is, my Jesus is greater no matter how long standing uh, that situation has been uh, before it was he was uh, before that situation came on the head it means that your challenge is too small for him uh, it means that it's a walkover it means that you are leaving this meeting this morning undoubtedly with a testimony you are leaving this meeting undoubtedly with a miracle you are leaving this meeting in Jesus uh, say I cannot be ashamed uh, say my faith is in Jesus uh, say I cannot be ashamed. My faith is in Jesus. Say, I cannot be ashamed. My faith is in Jesus. Hallelujah. You cannot be ashamed. Listen for your shame. I see God giving you double. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I, I know somebody can hear me, can hear what God is saying to you. For that shame, now you are receiving double. It's not me, it's Jesus. I said you are receiving double. Now listen to this. I didn't come to preach you happy. Jesus sent me. I came in his name. I didn't come to preach you happy. He sent me. I heard him. He sent me. He said, tell my children that I'm still Lord. He said, I'm still Lord. He said, I'm still Lord. Now, things could have happened that has cast shadow on that revelation. But today, I see God awakening that revelation in your heart. Uh, that Jesus is Lord. Uh, that this Jesus is Lord. Uh, that this Jesus is Lord. Uh, that this Jesus is Lord. I read your scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Come on now. Is somebody listening to me? Can you allow me to deliver God's message to you? Uh, it's possible you may be looking at me that who is this little boy? It's okay. I'm a little to boy with a big Jesus it's fine so you can look at me as being little it's okay it's okay but listen I dare you if you believe my message your change will come I, 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 I he sent me he sent me he sent me if you can believe this word I dare you to believe this word except Jesus was not raised from the dead is the only way your, your story will not change but I know you believe this word I know you believe this word I know you believe this word I read you a scripture Ephesians chapter 1 you can start the reading from verse 19 Paul was praying a prayer there he was praying for light and that's what we need and then he was praying for light so that the eyes of their understanding can be enlightened that they may know he said some things before but this is where I'm going he said that they might know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe in other words if you are a believer there is a power that has been made available to you when you got saved. The Bible called it exceeding greatness. Exceeding greatness. In other words, that power is bigger than your challenge. That power is bigger than your prayer point. That power is bigger than where you are. It's bigger than where you are going. He said the exceeding greatness of his power towards us will believe. Somebody scream and say, I believe. Come on, somebody say, I believe. Ask your neighbor, what do you believe? Can I hear you say what you believe? That Jesus is Lord. Now listen, any gospel that is preached that does not make live men crying that Jesus is Lord is not the gospel. What the gospel does is that he evidently sets forth Jesus crucified and glorified. The gospel is about his glorification. The captain of our salvation made perfect through suffering so that he can bring many sons to glory. 
That's what the gospel is about. It's about his glorification. And look at the glorification here. The Bible speaks about here. It said, according to the walking. Somebody say walking. Thank God that the power of God can walk. It's a walking power. It's not an idle power. It's not a sit on look power. It's a walking power. It's a walking power. He said, according to the walking of his mighty power. Come on, go to the next verse. Which he wrought in Christ. When? Come on, are you in church this morning? When? He raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. The walking of his mighty power. The walking of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ. When? He raised him from the dead. I love that. But that's not all. He just didn't raise him from the dead. He said, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That tells you something. This power not only can raise the dead, this power can also position you for a lifetime of victory. This power can position you to walk in dominion. This power can position you never to be defeated. Uh, he said, uh, at his own right hand in the heavenly place is coming out. I want us to read verse 21 together. Church, uh, one, two, three, go. Far above all principality and power and might uh, and dominion and every name that is named, uh, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22. And has put all things on under his feet uh, and gave him to be the head uh, over all things to the church. This is the gospel. How many things are under his feet? Come on, I can't hear you this morning. I said, how many things are under his feet? Uh, now listen, Jesus is Lord over how many things? Come on, I said, he's Lord over how many things? The Bible says, wherefore God at what highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. I believe in the Lordship of Jesus. I believe that there's no problem Jesus cannot solve. I believe that there's no need that Jesus cannot meet. Uh, I believe that there's no sorrow that Jesus cannot turn around. Uh, I believe that there are no ashes that Jesus cannot make beauty. I believe it with all my heart. Uh, I believe it with all my heart. And do you believe that with all your heart? Glory to God. I believe that. So that's the gospel. Believe the gospel. What makes the gospel powerful is not what you, it's not the telling. It is the con. So tap your neighbor and say, I have the victory. Because Jesus is Lord. Come on, I say, I have the victory. Because Jesus is Lord. Come on, tap your neighbor one more time. Say, I got a victory. Jesus is Lord. I, 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 there was a song. I, my spirit was singing this morning. Maybe we can sing that song. Um, um, Christ, my firm foundation. Church. The 
Hallelujah. How many of you know that Jesus cannot fail you? If you know it, I want to hear you rejoicing like somebody that knows that Jesus is your joker. That Jesus is your joker. That Jesus is your joker. Hallelujah. I got victory. Hallelujah. I got victory. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I perceive in my heart that testimonies are happening already. And my testimony is one of that. You can say that to yourself. Say, my testimony is one of that. Now hear this. By the grace of God, you are going to share your strangest testimony ever. Are there believers in this place? <laughs> I said, you are going to share your strangest testimony ever. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's in his name. We believe in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we believe our faith is anchored on that name. You know, some people were saying that there's no resurrection of the dead. And I could sense the anger in Paul's voice as he made a case about it in 1 Corinthians 15. You understand? He said, don't you understand when you say there's no resurrection of the dead that our faith is in vain? Because that's the anchor of our faith. It's the anchor of the gospel. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you must never forget that. That he was raised from the dead. So what's the problem? What's the challenge? A three-day-old dead, spiritually dead, physically, it was reversed by the mighty, by the working of his mighty power. So how big is your challenge? If you could raise him from the dead, why can't he give you babies? Why can't he heal you? Why can't he turn things around for you? Why can't he give you a new beginning? Why can't he change your story? Why can't he turn your life around? Glory to God. Our faith is in him. Glory to God. You know, if you're sick in your body, I want you to believe him. He was the one that went to Calvary. He bore your griefs. He bore it. He carried your sorrows. The account in Matthew said he took your infirmities. He carried your sicknesses. He took your infirmities. He carried your sicknesses. The Bible says by his stripes you've been made whole. So no matter the sickness in your body, Jesus Christ has made you whole. He has made you whole. Can you imagine stage four cancer? Every bit of it disappeared. Not a trace of it. I was reading somebody's testimony. All right. Not a trace of it. Stage four cancer completely disappeared. Couldn't find it anymore. Still alive. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Why should I carry such power and still be suffering? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. It's not carrying it that makes the difference. It's believing it. You have to believe in it. There are people, that, you know, and that's why I tell people longevity in Christianity is not a guarantee for change. Somebody, if someone gets born again today and believes in Jesus, you understand? And you have commonized him. You understand? It makes a difference. For some people, you know, Jesus, maybe because, you know, the way we grew up, we read a lot of Bible stories. So you saw him in my book of Bible story. Amen. So you don't see him as Lord. You see him and, you know, book of Bible story, they had a way of doing it. Jesus always had a sheep around his shoulder. Just felt that the guy is a shepherd. But this guy, he didn't have the opportunity of growing up like you. He came from a raw, terrible life. Came to the altar when they broke down and Jesus rescued him. So when he thinks about Jesus, he does not see the Jesus that John rested his head on. He, saw, he sees the Jesus that John saw on the island of Patmos. He said, this Jesus is Lord. He's not a vegetable Jesus. He's Lord. Amen. If you can dare believe him, he can rewrite your story. 
If you can dare believe him, he can write your story. You put your faith. Listen, if God could have raised him from the dead, then your challenge is too small for God to fix. By virtue of resurrection, he's Lord. The Bible calls him the first begotten from the dead. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Listen, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? For the fact that he conquered death is Lord. Is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please, you may be seated. I just share briefly before we minister something that God laid upon my heart. And the Lord captioned it for me. He said, prospering, the, prospering God's way. Prospering God's way. Now let me say this to you that you must realize that it's possible to be rich without God. And that's why that has, I think that has troubled many believers for years. You know, because they have seen people that seem to have money, material things, but they don't seem to believe in the Lord, and they've wondered that, ah, okay. But listen, there's a divine design of how man is meant to prosper. And this kind of prospering that God has for us, or the methodology that God has for us to prosper, is the kind of prospering that you prosper, but you don't lose your soul. There's a kind of prospering that you prosper, that you lose your soul. And there's a kind of prospering, I'm using the word prosper carefully now, you understand, that you prosper, that you don't lose your soul. Now this is the kind of prospering that God wants his children to prosper. And I want to show you an image of it by the Holy Ghost from the scripture. Now, prosperity, or permit me to say the word dominion, because prosperity is financial dominion. All right, dominion, the way God designed it, is not meant to be pursued. You are not meant to pursue dominion as a goal or a target. That's not the will of God. Now, the will of God is that prosperity should be an expression of God from your inside. It ought not to be something that you chase, but something that is a manifestation or a presentation or the result of the nature of God that you carry on the inside. Now, if you read the account in Genesis chapter 1, when God made man, the Bible says that in Genesis 1 and verse 26, it said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. It says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the head, the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So dominion was actually attached to the image of God and the likeness of God. So he said, let's make man in our own image and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. So dominion was actually the um, the offshoot or the manifestation of the image of God that man was meant to carry. So if you look at Psalms chapter 8 and verse 4, the Bible was talking about the creation of man. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? He said, I made him a little lower than angels. The word there is Elohim, so a little lower than God is the right translation. Or about the translation, translators for you know, concern, or I made it angels, all right, just to put it mildly, but the, but the Hebrew word there is actually Elohim. 
So made him a little lower than God. He says, and has crowned him with what? Glory and honor. Now, how did God crown him with glory and honor? He was made in God's image. We understand that image is glory. Are we together? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. We all beholding as in a glass the glory of God are changed into that same image from glory to glory. So the image of God is actually the glory of God. So when the Bible says it was crowned with glory and honor, the Bible was simply referring to the fact that it was actually made in God's image and after God's likeness. And I look at the next verse, verse 6. It says, Thou madest him to what? Have dominion over the works of thy hands. And thou hast put how many things? All things under his feet. So man was designed by God to have dominion over the earth. It was designed by God to have the earth under his feet. In other words, it was designed to be in charge. It was ordained by God to be in control of the earth. And the, the secret to his being in charge was actually connected to that image of God that he was. I'll show you more recent scriptures now, or New Testament scriptures. First John chapter 5 and verse 4 quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. First John 5 and verse 4. He said, For whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcome the world. See the Bible again, attaching, overcoming the world or dominion over the world, all right, to being born of God. In other words, he attached it to our nature. He attached it to the image of God on the inside of us. So whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. How many of us are born of God here? All right. So say to yourself, say, I overcome the world. Come and say, I overcome the world. Hallelujah. So God designed man, all right, to be an overcomer by reason of the fact that it was made in God's image and likeness. It was actually a mirror of God. It was an expression of God. And the whole earth responded to him because when they looked at man, what they saw was God. When man spoke, God spoke. When man moved, God moved. When man acted, God acted. So it was God all over the earth. And the earth was subject to him. The earth responded to him. He was in charge. Again, if you look at John chapter 3, just lay a few foundations in scripture before we say what the Lord would have us say. First John, uh, John chapter 3, I beg your pardon. When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and saw Jesus' miracles... Jesus was not like a regular person, all right? He did miracles, miracles, miracles. I don't know the miracles exactly that Nicodemus saw, but Jesus did miracles. And then Nicodemus said, undoubtedly thou art a teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus said to him, well, I can share the secret with you, all right, because it's available, it's meant for you. And Jesus said to him, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be what? Born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, it was telling him that, all right, there is an image of God. There is a nature of God that makes it possible for me to operate this way that I am operating. In other words, I'm operating in dominion. All right, I'm not subject to the natural. I'm ruling over the natural. I'm constraining the natural, determining how the natural will function. Why? Because I carry an image of God on my inside. Uh, is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? So you see that dominion is actually attached to the image of God. Again, in Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Let's start the reading from verse 1 quickly. Psalm 82 and verse 1. It says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Go on. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor. He's talking to God now, the congregation of the mighty. He said, defend the poor and fatherless. He said, do justice to the afflicted and needy. All right. In other words, you are not the poor and the needy. Okay. Why? Because you cannot deliver the poor and the needy if you are poor and needy. So he was talking to gods. So gods are not poor. Tell your neighbor, say, gods are not poor. I say, gods are not needy. Are we together? Come on, I said, are we together? All right, so he said, defend the poor and the fatherless. He said, do justice to the afflicted and the needy. He said, deliver the poor and the needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. And verse 5, he said, they know not. 
It said, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course. So what don't they know? What don't they know? He said, I've said, ye are what? Gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. So it was talking about who they were. It was talking about the identity. It was talking about the image of God on their inside. In other words, if you are going to rule and reign and dominate, all right, what you need to rule and reign and dominate is the nature of God on your inside. So man was not designed to chase after material things. By virtue of who he is, he commands them. He commands them. And that was why all throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, he never broke sweat once because of money. Lay us an example. Never broke sweat once because of money. Never broke sweat once for anything. Perpetually in charge. Even when they cornered him and Judas, Judas Iscariot was not around and they said, we want to collect the tax now. He was still not stranded. He was still not stranded. What does that mean? By virtue of who you are, you cannot be stranded. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? Now I'll show you another scripture here. Amen. In the book of Psalms chapter 1, if you start the reading from verse 1, if you see what the Bible says there, the Bible says, blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He says, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Come on now. He says, but what? His delight is in the law of the Lord. He says, and in his law does he what? Meditate day and night. And then look at that man. He's talking about that man now. He said, he shall be like a tree. That man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, sit in the seat of the scornful, stand in the way of sinners, whose delight is in the law of the Lord. He said, that man shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. Come on now. It says that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So there's a kind of man that cannot but prosper. So prosperity is not what you chase. It comes out of who you are. And that's a challenge. Now can I just say this to you? The concept of chasing Things began as a curse on Adam. And that was why God, when God was going to curse him, he said, curse be the ground for your sake. Curse be the ground for your sake. He said, in sorrow, you will eat from it all the days of your life. Now, the word sorrow there is painful toil. Painful toil. Someone says, can people have money by painful toil? Yes, they can. But that's not God's design. No, it's not. It's not God's design. He said, cost is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it. In other words, in painful toil. In other words, if you're going to get what to eat, you will have to toil for it. You will toil for it. Look at the next verse, verse 18. It says, Thorns also and tears shall it bring forth to thee. He said, And thou shalt eat the ebb of the field. Go on, verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. What was he saying to him? He was simply saying to him that, he was simply saying to him that you are going to have to chase these things to get it. But that was not God's design. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? But thank God because the Bible tells us in Galatians 3 and verse 13 that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. It's a being made a cause for us. That will not permit me. I'll share more scriptures with you along that line for you to understand. You know that when man fell, God told him, he said, if you eat of any tree of this garden, if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he said, you will surely die. Genesis 2 and verse 17. And of course, man ate it. 
all right? He, she, she ate it. It was Eve first that ate it, all right? If you look at the book of um, Genesis now, all right, and then you start the reading, Genesis chapter 3, and start the reading from, um, can let me find it, from where? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, come on now, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, to make one wise, she took of the fruits thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. When, he, when she saw that the tree was good, it's called self-help. It's self-help, you understand? You know, she wanted to prosper outside God. She wanted something outside what God had to offer. So it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes. She desired, desired to make one wise, and she took the food, fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. All right, and the Bible says in the next verse thereafter, what happened to them? The eyes of them both were opened, and then they knew that they were naked. And this has always amazed me. Why the first thing that happened to them when they ate the fruit was that their eyes were opened. It means that there is something about spiritual death and the way you see things. There's something about spiritual death and the way you see things. All right. And I want to show you something there. All right. I want to show you something quickly there. So that you can understand how man lost dominion. You know, the way man lost dominion was that he died. And what we call spiritual death is not cessation of life. Life act, life is actually separation from life. In other words, it is losing yourself. Because it is life that determines identity. It is life that determines who you are. For example, we are all humans here. Why? Because we have human life. What makes a dog a dog is the dog life. What makes a cat a cat is the cat life. What makes an ego an ego is the ego life. What makes you a man is the human life. So it is life that defines reality. And that's why the reality of a dog is that a dog cannot learn calculus. That's a reality. It doesn't matter. You can take a dog to school and school him very well and get him best job and enroll him in Harvard. It makes no difference. Yes, it cannot because it's not afforded in the quality of life that he has. You see, but man is different. Yes, there's nobody. And that's why, you know, for example, you know, um, you know um, Pastor Moya is a lawyer. You understand? How many of you know she was not born a lawyer? It wasn't like maybe when she was born, you just say, ah, this is a lawyer already. You understand? What makes you who you are in terms of your occupation or your career is what you learn in school. Now, the truth is anybody can learn law. You only need to go to school to learn it. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you go there and you go and learn it, you give yourself to it, you can learn it. All right, what I'm saying is that it's not in it. You understand? The only thing that is in it is the capacity to learn it. But the knowledge of it is not in it. Now, I'm not a lawyer. Why am I not a lawyer? Because I don't know what she knows. I know a little. Because she teaches me. Yes, my, she's my senior colleague. Amen. We are both learned fellows. <laughs> Amen. But I don't know what she knows. You know, because I didn't go, you know, to law school. I went to, um, I studied architecture. <laughs> I studied architecture. So I know some things in that area because that's where that's what i studied for a number of years you understand you know the capacity to learn it now there's no way if if, if every human has the capacity to know what humans can know the quality of life that you have affords you that possibility and that's why forget it all the concept of apes you know you know planet of the apes you know, as the apes taking over the world, it can't happen. <laughs> Forget that thing. It can't happen. Yes, I'm telling you. Yes, that it cannot happen. Yes, that the apes will not take over. Apes will not be talking. You understand? What's the name of that ape there? I've forgotten his name now. 
Okay, Caesar. Is his name Caesar? Okay. Yes, and then you start beating and start talking and say, well, yeah, where's the gun? Apes are shooting gun. <laughs> Forget it. It can't happen. Amen. Amen. Why? Because the life that they have does not afford that possibility. It's not available in it. It's not available in it. There's a way you process things. There's a way you think. There's a way we think as humans. Animals don't think that way. And that's why I tell people that you need to understand, for example, when we talk about sex, you need to understand that sex is, the way it is for humans, is not the same way it is for animals. You understand? I, sex is not a covenant for animals. No, it's not. It's not a covenant. You know, so that's why you can take a dog from your house to go and meet a dog in somebody's house. You understand? I'm telling you, it's purely biological. There's nothing so um, connect at all. You understand? Because for them, it's purely reproductive. Purely. You understand? He says, it's on it. Oh, yeah, come and meet. You understand? And have children. And somebody will sell the children. Purely commercial. <laughs> nothing extra. You understand? So there's nothing, you know. But when, when, when you understand as a human, you know, that sex is not that way for humans. It has meaning. For animals, it does not have meaning. For humans, it's intimacy. You don't do it for children. You do it for intimacy. The Bible says that, the, uh, the Bible says that, um, you know, for this cause, the man of his father is going to cleave unto his wife. He says, and the two of them shall become one flesh. Cleave unto his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. Do you know the funny thing? He didn't mention anything about children there. So the subject of sex, first of all, is not connected to procreation. It's actually connected to intimacy. Cleave unto his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? So it's animalistic to have it outside marriage. You know, sometimes people behave in certain ways because Adam died. Because what happened when Adam died was that life left him. And life and light are connected together. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. When he lost life, he lost light. And also when he looked at himself for the first time, he saw that he was naked. Life had left. Listen, the proof of life is light. That's how you know. How do you know that you are alive? There are some things that is strange to you. I know this out of order. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? So the very moment Adam ate the fruit and his wife, he died. And he stepped from light into darkness. So the things that he knew before, he didn't know them again. Meanwhile, that nature he lost was actually the key to his dominion. Lord, help me communicate this well now. Now, when I say dominion, what do I mean? Look at what happened. God brought all the animals to Adam in the garden. I said, Adam, he said, sir, he said, name, name them. And Adam, pam, 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 not having studied biology, not having done animal science, you understand? He named the animals correctly. Somebody said dominion. You know, the challenge is that we don't know that prosperity, financial prosperity, is, com is, 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 um, is, um, is um, complementary to dominion. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? And that's why you, you just have to understand that if you really, really want to prosper, you want to prosper, you have to, you have to allow the image of God on your inside to find expression in what God has put in your hands to do. And money will come. I'll show you a quick example because of time. You know, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 12, if you start the reading from verse 1, you know, the Bible speaks about the man called Abraham, and the Bible tells us that God appeared unto him. Now, who appeared unto Abraham? The Lord. And the Lord said unto him, what did God say to him? He said, get thee out of where? Your country 
and from your kindred and from your father's hand. It says, unto a land that I will show you. So God called him from his father's house. And God said, there's a land. I want to show you that land. You know the interesting thing about the land that God was going to show him? Till, till Abraham died, he never inherited that land. In fact, the Bible gave us account in Hebrews 11 that both himself and Isaac and Jacob, they lived as strangers in the very land of promise that God promised them. So that tells you something, that the land that God was showing him was not for him. It was for his children. And that's the way God works. When God is going to call you, God most of the time, if not all of the time, will call you to do something that is meant to benefit others, not you. That's what God is going to call you to do. He's going to call you to do something that is meant to benefit other people. Like, for example, Apostle Shekhar and Fukuyo are called to bless us. This is what they are doing. This is the land that God showed them. You're on that land. It wasn't meant for them in that sense. It's meant for us. So God will call you out of the familiar into a future that is meant to make you a blessing. Now listen, Abraham, God didn't call Abraham simply because God just looked at Abraham and God felt like, this guy, I need to bless this guy. This guy has to prosper, have a lot of money and be rich and all of that. No, God had an intention. He needed a template. God needed all the families of the earth to be blessed. He needed to reverse the course. And God needed somebody that could be the progenitor. Somebody that could be the template by which God could reproduce that blessing in the whole earth. And God called Abraham and God said, Abraham, are you interested? And Abraham said, why not, Lord? I'm interested. And then God said to him, look at what God said to him. God said, get thee out of your camp. He said, and I will do this for you. What did he say we will do for him? He said, I will make of thee what? A great nation. Now listen, I want you to follow what I'm saying here. I'll soon be done in a moment now. Abraham's greatness was not pursued. It wasn't like Abraham slept on him and said, I have a dream. What's the dream? I want to be a great nation. That wasn't how it happened. And Abraham began to walk. To walk. That wasn't how it happened. God said to him, he said, I will make of you a great nation. So it was God that said it. He said, I will bless you. And God said, I will make your name great. And God said, and thou shall be a blessing. And God said, I will bless those that bless you. He said, I will curse those that curse you. And God said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And what happened? The Bible says, Abraham departed. You know what I see there? Now, this is Genesis 12, all right? And then in Genesis 24, the Bible tell, tells us there that Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in how many things? In all things. That was between 12 and 24, 12 chapters of the Bible, all right? Took us through the life of Abraham from the age of 75 to when he died, all right? The Bible said he was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. Now, listen to this, and this is very important. Prosperity is not sudden. It's the product of a journey. And the challenge is that there are many people that want to be rich overnight. Now, God can always give us manna, but manna is not the promised land. And also, when they got to the promised land, manna ceased. And that's why you can't just sit down and say that all the time, God is going to send money to me. God is going to send money to me. I'm going to show up and bring animals. God, money. Can God do? Yes, he can. When you're in the wilderness. But don't be in the wilderness forever. Yeah, my 40 years maximum. You shouldn't be more than Israel. Do you understand what I'm saying? You should get out of the place. If not, you may not enter your promised land. You understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to get to the land where God is taking you to. Listen. There's an image and nature of God on the inside of you that God has given you to bless your world. Your prosperity is attached to it. 
And that's why money is not the goal. Blessing your world is the goal. In Proverbs chapter 23, maybe you can find the right verse. The Bible says, labor not to be rich. If you can find it, maybe verse 4, verse 5 or thereabout. It puts it that way. It says, labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. It says, cease from thy own wisdom. Labor not to be rich. In fact, if you read it from verse 1, all right, it was an interesting conversation. Start from verse 1 quickly. It said, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. In other words, when you sit down to eat with the high and the mighty, the rich and the wealthy, you understand, and things are set before you, don't be wobbly wobbly. You, you have to think. You understand? You're just, and you're just putting everything. He said, consider diligently what is before thee. Look at verse 2 quickly. He says, and put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, in other words, control your appetite. Amen. So that you don't eat away your destiny. All right. Look at it. Verse 3. He said, be not desirous of his dainties. He said, for they are deceitful meat. In other words, you look at it and say, oh, I like his car. I like his house. I like this thing. Mm -mm. That must not be your focus. How did he get there? How did he get there? You know, what we are sharing now is one of the reasons why, that even if you go to the, where you don't have young men that are studying, you know, maybe that went to school. A lot of young men, even the ones that do not want school, you understand, they don't even want to learn a trade anymore. Yeah. People don't want to acquire skill, meaningful, impactful skill. Ask them what they want. They just want money. Go say how? <laughs> how? No, you don't want to acquire any, any skill or value. You don't want to make a difference. Let me tell you something. Anything that generates money for you and is not solving problems for people is not sustainable. <laughs> it's not. If it's not solving problems for people, it's not sustainable. You understand? They are the kind of things that your money can disappear in one day because it's not solving problems for anybody. You understand? Because people's problems are always there. As long as you are solving problems for people, money will come your way. And listen, the image of God on your inside makes you a problem solver. The nature of God on your inside makes you a problem solver. You are not a decoration. You are the joy of many generations. You are not a decoration. You are the answer to problems, answer to questions, solutions to problems. You know, for the first time in Adam's life, Prior to that time, when he was tending the garden, Adam never thought about food. He was just tending the garden because God said so. He wasn't thinking about where food was going to come from. He was just walking in the garden, tending the garden, and he was sing and doing. And God said, it's time to name animals. I said, why not? He sat down. He named, I don't know how many days it took him. He took his time. He named it. He was just enjoying himself, doing the will of God. And he did it and ate, did it and ate, did it and ate, did it and ate did it and hurt, did it and was in prosperity. When he shifted his focus from doing God's will to self-help, that was where his downfall came from. So the question is, why are you here? Oh, recently, I had the privilege of... Um, listening to a man of God. You know, I just, it was a, you know, all the short, short videos, you know, that sometimes just pass, flashes by. And the short video flashed by. And this man of God said something. He blessed me. He spoke to me. He spoke to my heart when he said it. He said, I've never prayed for a car. He said, but I have a few of them. He said, I've never prayed for a house. He said, but God has blessed me with one. He said, I've never prayed for a jet. He said, God has blessed us. I've discovered people that run after these things don't get it. And that's why if you see someone like Baba, he does not carry money on his head. His passion is souls. That's his calling. And God blesses him in return. <clears throat> Listen, you carry value inside. Someone says, how? You are God's image. 
It means that there's a worth of God on your inside. His glory and honor is inside you. There's a worth of God. There's a value of God within. We are talking about prospering God's way. So he told them, he said, in, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25, he told them, he said, take no thought. He said, what you shall eat or drink. He says, or what you shall put on. He said, is life not more than meat, body, uh, more than meat and body more than raiment? And then he tells us in verse 33, what life is all about. He says, seek first what? The kingdom of God. He says, and is righteousness. He says, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, that was the challenge of the man in Luke chapter 12. If you start from verse 16, there was a man whose land brought forth plentifully. Plentifully. <laughs> and the man sat down and thought to himself, it's time to rest. He said, I'm going to tear down this old barn. I will build new barns. He said, and I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And God said to him, God said to him, he said, today, he said, thou fool, he said, your soul is required of you today. He said, then, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? And the Bible tells us, Jesus was speaking there. He said, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, but is not rich towards God. In other words, when your life is not about God and the will of God for you. This is how God designed us to prosper. Solve problems. Meet needs. Make a difference. Every call of God is always to solve a problem. Every, every ministry that God gives a man is towards meeting a need. Every. Jesus came to the earth to meet the need. The apostles of the Lamb were called to meet the need. So there's no calling of God that is not, that, that is not called or that is not ordained or designed to meet the need. So you focus on it. Between, between Genesis 12 and Genesis 24, Abraham faithfully and devotedly stuck to the work that God gave him because the mandate on his life was to be a template of faith. So Abraham stuck to the work of faith and mastered it and perfected that work of faith. As the Bible showed us in Romans chapter 4, he worked and perfected that work of faith. And God said, thank you. Abraham, you are done. And God carried his work. And God said, thank you. You have used your life to give me a template that others can be blessed with. There was no way he would not have been blessed in all things. So what keeps you awake at night? What wakes you in the morning? What's your passion? What's the dream that God has given you? It doesn't happen overnight. It may take you days. It may take you months. It may take you weeks. But that's how God prospers people. Along the way, can he give you manna? Yes, he will. He will give you manna along the way. But don't stay in the wilderness because it's not the land flowing with milk and honey. You stay in the wilderness, you will keep fighting battles. And the battles will never end. And that's why you must leave that wilderness and step into purpose. You have to step into God's plan. Step into God's agenda. I believe that there's a, a place where a man gets to. That money does not matter anymore to you. But being a blessing. You just want to be a blessing. You just want to be a blessing. You just want to be a blessing. I've told you my story before. Some years ago, when I first came into ministry, 
you know, that was, I, I, I joined ministry full-time in 2011. I was, I was really thinking in my head, okay, how is this going to be? You know, so I was trying to juggle it and a few, a few things together. You know, God said, in one dozo, God said, drop that camera. I was a photographer covering weddings. God said, drop that camera. He said, don't do it anymore. So I found a way around it. I put um, somebody in charge, gave the camera, and then we're splitting the money. And God said, that's not what I told you to do. I said, but Lord, I'm not taking pictures anymore. God said, no. So he spoke to me, but sincerely, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't respond. I didn't obey. So there was a mysterious flood that came into the sectariat. You understand? You know, one day, and the camera was in the sectariat, you know, and the camera got spoiled. You know, I gave it to one of our brethren in the house, Mr. Fuller, to help me fix it. But it was unfixable because it was the Lord that spoiled it. You know, when God spoiled something, there's no body that can fix it. They tried. Yes, it was just unfixable. The Lord covered their eyes to see a solution. <laughs> so the camera went and I never saw it again. You know. So I told Pastor one time like that. I said, Pastor, I said, I still want to, you know, do one or two businesses and others. So I says, okay, it's all right. You know, you know, Daddy. You know, so he just said, it's all right. It's okay. You can, you can go ahead. So I went ahead and I did it. I struggled. Oh, I struggled. I struggled. I struggled. It was in the midst of it, myself and my wife, we had a car then. It was an under bulldog. You know under bulldog? All right, it was an under bulldog. And one day, a brother drove it, and then I don't know what happened the way he drove it, but the gas stopped working. You know, so the car could no longer do reverse. It could only do front. <laughs> you know, and he said, how much is the reverse? He said, 70K. Ah! 70k. You know, that's almost 70% of my annual rent. It was a lot. I couldn't afford it. You know, so I, my wife and I were had to drive that car for a year without reverse. Have you driven a car without reverse before? <laughs> Amen. I can teach you for free. <laughs> After one year, I think I'm proficient enough to teach how to drive a car without reverse. The car didn't have reverse. And for one year, we, we just drove it around like that. We just drove it around like that. <laughs> and we're doing business. You <laughs> but the ends just never met. So in 2014, the Lord told me, he said, are you ready now? I said, I'm ready now. Now listen, it's not running up and down that prospers people. It's doing God's will. So the Lord told me, he said, he said I, I don't have plans to share your mind, to share your mind with any other thing apart from ministry. That's what the Lord told me. So I knew for me, ministry was a consecration. I needed to give my whole life to it. So 2014, shut down the business and focused on ministry. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to put my whole attention on ministry. If I perish, I perish. 2014 to date, I've not gone back on my vow. But as the Lord taking care of us, sweatlessly, effortlessly, now, let me tell you something. Your blessing is in doing God's will. Self-help will make you eat a strange fruit. It's in doing God. You follow the will of God for your life. You follow it. Because, listen, God's idea of prosperity is not you sorting yourself out. It's God multiplying you. He said, I will multiply you. You will not be few. He said, I will also glorify you. You will not be small. Can you see I there? God didn't say you will multiply. He said, I will multiply you. In other words, your multiplication has a cause, and the cause is God. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? And God began to take care of us. 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 Now, I say this with all sincerity in my heart. You know, and anybody that knows me, I have no inordinate affection for money. At all. <laughs> At all. Anything God can give me, let me not have it. I'm fine. <laughs> when we drove our car, the car didn't have a seat. Some would beat us like, if we were grateful, we we're grateful like people living in a mansion. Say, Father, thank you. Ah, that you can even count us worthy that we will have a car. It's the blessing, you know, that people like us are even driving car. Ah, 
Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. God saw us giving thanks. And God said, oh, yeah, let me change the car for you. The Bible says that those that will be rich, it said they will pierce themselves with many sorrows. When you run ahead of God's plan for your life in getting wealth, you know that he said something the last time somebody shared that says, he said, he said, God said for some people, your weight is over. He said for some people, your weight is not over. You know why? Because there's still covetousness. Until you drop it, God won't let your weight be over. Because you can't carry that covetousness into where God is taking you to. So God will keep you there. You know when we teach like this, we say, ah, oh, teach us new creation. This is new creation reality, so. You understand? I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. This is what makes a solid Christian. A solid Christian. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying? So walk with God. The way God wants to prosper you may not be the way God prospered your neighbor. So don't go and do copy and paste. You walk with God. One instruction after another. God says start that business. You start it. God says expand the business into two states. You expand it. God says open that line. You open it. God says close that one and start this one. You follow him. One step after another, one step after another, because prosperity is a journey. Does it happen overnight? Will you, can you make mistakes? Yes, you make mistakes. You retrace your step. Ah, I didn't get it right. Lord, I'm sorry. Okay. So, Lord, what, I made mistakes. Now, I, I say this humbly under God, I've never lacked. My wife is here. You understand? From 2014 today, we have never lacked. If we don't have it, it's because we don't need it. But if we need it, God will, show, God will provide it. If we need it, God will provide it. Never lacked. No gimmick, no cutting corners. None at all. No hiding what does not belong to us, Never. Won't do it. No treating people in a special way because of what they have. Never. <laughs> I'll be greeting you specially. So I can give it. Never. Just following God. One step at a time. If God says that you are not old enough to have it, you say, yes, sir, I'm not old enough. When I'm old enough, you give me. Now, when God begins to bless people in a very strange way, others say, why? He's been through the process. I remember some years ago, you know, just after, you know, we were about to get married, there was a particular couple. They wanted to move into a house, you know, and the house, when they told me the amount of the house, but it told me that mother it was very high. You understand? In Ife. Not in oh, maybe like eight or seven years ago. <laughs> you understand? I said the house was maybe they said five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand parana. I said, what kind of house is that? Is the floor paved with gold? What kind of house is that? Yes, I said, ah, it's a fully furnished apartment. It has it has AC. I said, sir, what's your income? He told me the income. I said, you don't you see what you need in your life now is fun. Fan. You need good fun. Yes, good fun. See, don't, see you, don't, you don't need AC yet. You need a good fan that is blowing very well. <laughs> the brother escaped. He left me. He just felt like, well, I don't like what this pastor is saying. Hmm. Do you know that our brother pierced himself with sorrow? He left the faith. Because people don't know that in, in your dealings with God, how many of you know that going to the wilderness for the children of Israel was not like enjoyable? No, it was not. But our people, they don't want to wait in the process. I, 
Are you listening to what I'm saying here? And then you, 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 you borrow money, you put yourself in a very dark situation just to live a life of luxury that your level is not yet there. And God says that when is your faith going to grow? Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? When is your faith going to grow? Because challenges groom your faith. As you are there doing what you are doing. Now someone says, what was I doing for the old one year when I was driving the car without reverse? God saw me. But God didn't show up the first month. He didn't show up the second month. He didn't show up the third month. He didn't show up the fourth month. He's still my father. He didn't show up the fifth month. He didn't show up for one year. And I was praying, pastoring, preaching, teaching. But God said, let him drive the reverseless car. You understand? He's learning. He has to grow. Hello. So God takes us through things. He's cutting off some things in you. Removing some things. For some of us, by the time God is done with you, pride will have left you. If God does what he has for you now, <laughs> you won't walk again. You'll be floating. God knows. <laughs> God knows that this one. I, I need to finish pride in him. So that by the time I prosper him, you understand, he will still be talking to people. Not that people will be trying to struggle to talk to him. It's because I will walk him through it. So God will just keep giving you manna. I'll be looking at the promised land like this. God will say, I want to be sure that you are fully followed. Now you can have dreams and desires. Oh Lord, I want to live here. I want to be here. That is beautiful. You understand? But cut your coat according to your cloth. Why you release your faith for what God has in store for you? No pressure. Somebody say no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. And sometimes what puts us under pressure is pay. Because sometimes you go for, to some places and then you meet a pair and then you saw that person and say, ah, we're in school together. You understand? Don't use somebody's timing to judge your own timing. Amen. <laughs> you better follow God. The Bible says a faithful man, we are bound with blessings. So be faithful. What God has called you to do, be faithful. Recently, um, somebody sent me a picture, Pastor Moji in Ikeja Church, sent me a picture of when we used to pastor in Mayfair Church. I was very slim. My tie was fat. <laughs> that, was my, that was where I cut my teeth in pastoring in GLT. Yes, I was in Mayfair Church. We'll preach and preach and preach and preach. People don't show. You preach and preach. You know, almost every, you know, sometimes you preach three people. You will preach like you're preaching to the world. You'll be sweating like this. You'll wipe your face like that. You're preaching. Glory to God. With somebody blessed there. Glory to God. And, you know, people will pass, you know, sometimes and look and wonder, huh, how many people are in the church? <laughs> And I remember there was a day Daddy had a meeting. It was a meeting. Some, some of us could have been in that meeting. It was a very cold December. So we had that meeting. It was outside. And I looked at the crowd of people that came for that meeting. How many people were in that meeting that year? Very cold. Very cold. It was for a whole month we were praying. And sometimes in that meeting, we were over 100. I was say, Pastor M.F. there. We were struggling to be 10. It, it was there. I said, hey, Grace, wow. You, understand? you know, God was already bringing me to a point of humility that has, and that's why, you know, God says, my son, I'm sending you, go and pastor this church. I will not enter church like the glory to God. You understand? He has dealt with us. <laughs> it's not of him that run it, or of him that will it, but of God that showed mercy. 
If three people say they are coming to church, we say, glory to God. We give God praise. Three people, wow. Glory to God. Thank you. Amen. Because we know that only God can bring three people. Some people say, what's happening? Give me the mic. This church will be filled. Okay, we'll soon give you. <laughs> we'll soon give you. We'll soon give you. So you are broken. So I'm going to miss that to you also. There is, I'm broken. I'm just saying, Lord, have mercy. Only you can do this. Help your son. So walk with God. I mean, if you understand how God prospers, it's a journey. It's not sudden. One step at a time. Be grateful for where you are. Be grateful for one blessing at a time. One victory at a time. One instruction at a time. Be faithful where you are. Be faithful where you are. There are some people doing business in the house now, you know, that God has greatly helped. Ask them when they've been at it. A faithful man, we are bound in the blessing. I know a man some years ago, he was into a particular kind of business. I won't mention the name of the kind of business. He was into a particular kind of business. The business didn't do well. I didn't understand why he didn't do well as a, as, as a, as a grown-up child. But when I grew up, I discovered he never sat at his business. That was the issue. He would go around town and be visiting people and be laughing. But he won't sit at the business. Why not sit with what God has given you to do? Don't say it's too small. Don't say what is even happening here. Why not sit with it? I remember when I was on campus, for those of us that went to OAU, you remember in Earth Sciences, there was a couple that I used to sell rice some years ago. Yes, that the man and the woman. I never entered that place without meeting them there. They're always there. Never. Never. They are always there. They are always there. And that's challenge. You know, sometimes someone says, I want to resign. Why do you want to resign? I want to go into business. So do what? They say, I want to have more time. Okay. I think you are choosing the wrong profession. <laughs> yes, and that's why. So it, the, 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 the business opens at 8 a.m. in the morning. You don't show up until 12. And by 2, you are gone for the day. You understand? The next time they see you is next week. You're just calling them. Have you closed the shop? Yes, close the shop now. You understand? They say, ah, they packed all the money. Why wouldn't they pack it? <laughs> why wouldn't they pack it? You are doing business. Sit with your business and build your business. A faithful man abounds in the blessing. You are employed somewhere, sit with your job. Don't say how much are they paying you. The money they are paying you, if you steal it, they will arrest you. You say how much is money? If, they, if you steal that money, they will arrest you. As much as that money is, it can embarrass you. Be faithful at that business, at, at that work. Sit with it and do your job. There's something that God is teaching you there. There's a training that God is taking you through. You know, sometimes people come and say, Lord, give me a new job. God said, the last one, how did you do it? God said, I want to give you a new job, but this job, you have to deliver. <laughs> this is what I give you. You have to do it well. And listen, when you say you're a Christian, you should do your job well. Because that's God. That's the way God is. When have you met God not doing his work well? The, there is, listen, there's no, there's no laziness in God's nature. So be dogged at your job. Go the extra mile. Bring ideas to the table. Make a difference. Don't be mentally and emotionally unavailable at work. But you are collecting salary at the end of the month. That's unjust. But your mind is not there. Just do the barest minimum. And you are gone. But that's your training ground. That's where God is training you. So walk with God. One step at a time learning. Growing. Developing, learning, growing, 
developing. Daddy would always say this, the greatest value of work is not the salary, but personal development. The greatest thing God is doing is not what he's doing in your bank account, but what he's doing inside you. Let me use this as an example, maybe because I'm in the ministry, you understand. You know, somebody once said this one day, and it's true, and I agree. You know, all the wealth in the world today, if you redistribute it and you share it equally, it will still go back into the hands of some people. Yeah, because some people are trained, experienced, professional spenders. They've never learned to make money, so there's no way. The money will leave their hand because they will practice what they have been learning. It's called spending. And some people have learned how to make it, so they will collect the money back. If you take Pastor Yadeboe and you say, okay, today, you know, we, we just want to take you, God forbid, from redeem and say, go and start another church elsewhere. The crowd will go there. Because it's not the name. What God has worked inside of him. And that's why if you don't walk, you won't grow. If you are just lazing around and you are not doing anything, you are not, going to, you are not developing. So don't run away from work. Work won't kill. Work develops. It will groom you. It will grow you. It will make you more valuable. And that's how God prospers. When your value increases and the glory of God upon your life intensifies, all right, what is happening around your life, the activity, the economy around your life will increase because the glory of God has increased upon your life. So be faithful. Whatever it is you are doing, business person, career person, you are doing ministry, sit with your work and be faithful at it. Don't complain. The money is not coming. No, be faithful at what you are doing. How can we do it differently? What can we do that we have not done before? What more problem can we solve for people? What difference can we make? What value can we add to this product? To take it to the next level. Sometimes you're at it one year. Sometimes you're at it two years. Sometimes you're at it three years. Four years. Five years. Six years. Pow! You eat a gosha. Someone says, I, 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 man of God, is that I like the way God is just dealing with you. You understand? Because people do not know how God is dealing with you until it becomes visible. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? That's where it works. So you learn. Same thing with marriage, preparing for marriage. You understand? There are things that God is taking you through now. He's grooming you, He's learning you, He's training you, and you refuse to learn it. You enter into marriage, you understand? You have to learn it there. So God is dealing with some things inside of you. When I first got into my relationship, I had read books. I wanted a good marriage, so I had consulted, read books. You know, Pastor Bimbo, the call of blessed memory, almost every message of hers that I could find as a little child, I, really, I, I listened to it. My sister was in a relationship. She had a mentor, married mentor. They gave her books. I consumed the books. I said, this married thing will get it. You know, when I got into the, marriage, into the relationship, six months, I was scrambling for help. I was all over the floor. I had read books. <laughs> My head was boiling with books. <laughs> ah. So I asked my I said, what's happening here? He said, this thing is not working. So I went back to God. I said, God, I have all the things I read. I put them to work, but this thing is not working. God said, there's a class you missed. <laughs> I said, God, what is that class? God said, all the things you have read, you will not submit it to me and let me take charge. You know. So in my home, I'm the head of my home, by the grace of God. But I'm not like this. I've been helped. <laughs> I know the real head is God. Thank God for mercy. We will not be here. Amen. So there's not, there's a, no, no, no. So a, being a head in your home is not having your way. It's letting God have his way. <laughs> you have to let God have his way. That's why if my wife does my attention and says, sweetheart, this thing and this thing, I just perceive it. We have to be careful. There was something that I wanted to do last day. I told my wife, I said this and this and this and all that. My wife says, okay, you are the head. I'll follow you. But I just want you to just, you know, pay attention to this thing and this thing. He didn't leave me because I know who is the head. You understand? So I said, okay, God, 
this is my wife pointing God's word to me. And no, how dare you point the word of God to me? Am I not the pastor in this house? <laughs> if you want to have peace at home, you yes, understand? Submit to the God of peace that can give you peace always by all means. Amen. It, it, let, let me say something. Peace in marriage is a miracle. Only God can do it. Yes, I might have heard me say it. I'm not saying it for velocity. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> you understand? Only God can give it. You understand? And until you come and you surrender to God and say, God, have your way in this marriage. You are Lord of all. It's either you are Lord of all or not Lord at all. Just have your way. Any instruction, give it. We'll do it. Anything you say that we are not getting right, we are just. We'll get it right. So I can't sit down and I'm in church and pastor is preaching and pastor says something about the way I treat my wife. You understand? I say, no, no, no. How about how, do, how she's treating me? <laughs> the man that God is helping. You can't try it. Or you are sitting and God draws your attention. The way you spoke to your wife yesterday was not okay. Say, ask with that. I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to talk to you that way. Oh. You know, that's not the way I should have talked to you. Please, just forgive me for talking that way. You said, no, I cannot apologize. Strong men don't apologize. Where is that in the Bible? <laughs> Where is that in the Bible? So there are some things that God will deal with you. You said, God dealt with me. I'm sure if God didn't deal with me, maybe the first six months when we did everything, we were just walking. Yes, I will have entered into marriage like this. Uh, it's the things we know now. Uh, if not for the things we know, how would this thing not be vibrating like this? Yes, uh, my wife I said, I said, no, do you know what I know? How many books have you read? Am I not the one training you? <laughs> yes, but for God, for God, God first of all scattered what I know. Yes, uh, I tried to put it to what it didn't work. And I discovered that it's God that makes things work. It's not what you know. <laughs> so I said, Lord, have your way now. As some of us concerning your children, God will deal with things in you. You understand? So that you will not cover the glory of your children when he gives them to you. You understand? If God says, give me the boy, he says, no, I can't give you. So God will have prepared you like Abraham. You understand? But then God says, oh yeah, where is Isaac? You just say, take him. He's all yours. You know, if God didn't deal with Abraham, when God asked for Isaac, he would not have dropped it. But God had dealt with him. So walk with God. That you'll be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Is somebody listening to me? I hope you were blessed. That's the word that the Lord said to give you this morning. Rise to your feet, everyone. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Father, thank you. And say, Father, I want to prosper your way, not my way. All right? Whatever it is that you are dealing with me on, I want to follow through on it. I will, I will not already past divine schedule. I will not. I will not resort to self-help. I will not cut corners. I won't find my own way around it. I won't try to go around your dealings with me to sort myself out. No, I will not. I will go through the process. I will stay on track. I will remain faithful until I have my testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, I just want to pray for people believing God for healing in their bodies very quickly. The Bible says that Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. He said the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. He said by his stripes, he said we have been made whole. I believe very strongly in my heart that there is an anointing of God's spirit in this place to heal. So if you believe in God for healing in your body, please I love you to make your way to the front. I just love to pray for you, lay hands on you. And I trust that the Lord God will bring health to your body. If you want me to pray for you and lay hands on you, make your way to the front. If you believe in God for someone, you can also stand in the gap for someone. That's fine. Isaiah 53 and verse 4, the Bible says, Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. By stress we are healed. I want you to believe God as you come forward. Wherever you are, just come forward. I love to pray for you. I love to lay my hands on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm the Lord that he let you. Thank you, Lord. Hey. 
Thank you, Lord. You sent your word. You sent your word. And he. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you are, lift your hands to Jesus. Lift your hands to Jesus, everyone in front. And I want you to say, Jesus, I believe that you are my healer. I believe uh, that you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, and striped for my healing. I believe that you bore my griefs, you carried my sorrows. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. You are the Lord, my healer. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you the Holy Ghost. Are you I rebuke that in family. Out in the name of Jesus. name of Jesus. thank you Lord I give you praise blessed be your holy name there's somebody here you are under the burden of debt this is how you know yourself when you were coming from for, for this meeting today that was your prayer point you said Lord I'm breaking under the weight of this debt 
And you ask the Lord, the Lord, if you can turn it around. He said, I will be grateful. And I will come and I will testify. The Lord said to tell you, he said, I've heard you. He said, now the weight and the burden of that debt has been rolled away. There's somebody that came into this service. You came bearing the weight of regret. You took a wrong decision. And right from that moment, everything backfired. And you came into this meeting wishing that you had not made that mistake. But unfortunately, God now, you've made the mistake already. But the Lord said to you that I'm the God of second chance. In fact, I'm the God of many chances. And the Lord said to announce to you that right in the service, I'm giving you another chance. He said, uh, you will look back and there will be no memory of the mistake that you have made. He said, because I will turn around your captivity like one that dreams. I will turn it around and I'll fill your mouth with laughter and I'll fill your tongue with singing said the Lord you know there's a mother here you trust in the Lord for the healing of your child I'm not sure that your child is here but our condition has been over and over and over and over again you've been to the hospital you've used drugs but the Lord said to announce to you that is an attack of the enemy and the Lord said I should declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that the storm is over and I declare in the name of Jesus that the storm is over. In the name of Jesus, the storm is over. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. There's somebody here, you came to this meeting with, with, with a back pain. The pain is actually all around your waist. So it's more of a waist pain than a back pain. All right. And it's around your waist up to your private region. All right. That's how you feel the pain. The Lord said to tell you that I've made you whole. He said, I've made you whole. He said, I've made you whole. He said, now that pain, you feel it no more. Now that pain, you have it no more. You have that pain no more. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, the Lord spoke to me. He said, there's somebody here. You have been tormented, all right, by body odor, all right? The Lord said that I've delivered you from it. Body odor, mouth odor. The Lord said, I've delivered you from it. The Lord said, it is a demonic affliction. And the Lord said, the, the, that demonic affliction, the chains are broken now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's an aroma of God's favor and goodness all around you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all around you. It's all around you. It's all around you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know there's somebody that came to this meeting. Your landlord has been knocking on your door that you need to set to your rent. And he has threatened you. And giving you an ultimatum. The Lord said to tell you that it will show up for you. And the Lord said to announce to you that this is the last of its kind in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because God has turned around your story. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. I want you to give him praise and give him glory. Just exalt him, give him praise and give him glory. Give him praise and give him glory. You know, there's somebody, a, 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 a lady, a married woman, I, I, I heard your voice, two people now. All right, there's a, there, there's a married woman here. Once upon a time you were married and, you know, things have gone awire. And somehow in your heart you are coming to a point where you are settling for this life because if you look you cannot see yourself coming out of it but God said it's not true God said that what you are believing is a lie so to you by the devil God said to announce to you that I'm the God of new beginnings and because of you I gave the word for this year and the Lord said watch it he said this year he said I will give you a new start all right he said I will give you a new start I will give you a new home I will give you a new marriage and I will give you a new beginning 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's a woman here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, you, you came to this meeting this morning with your mind made up that I'm tired of this marriage. I just want to get out of it. I'm tired of this marriage. I just want to get out of it. And the Lord said to tell you, he said, be still and know that I am God. For thus saith the Lord, I'm dealing with your husband already. I'm dealing with him already. Be patient. Trust me through the process. For the storms in your house will come to an end. For I, the Lord, have stepped in to bring the storms to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, don't be hasty and don't be rash. He says, so that you don't abort what the Lord is doing in your home and in your marriage. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and give God praise. Lift your hands, everyone, and give God praise. I can see someone here, you, you had an accident. And that accident, all right, has caused you to have pains. I don't know exactly where the pains are. I'm not sure, but I perceive it's somewhere around your leg. The Lord said to tell you, it's been, it's been for a while. And you're almost getting used to it. The Lord said to tell you, he said, I'm healing you. He said, right now where you are, he said, my hand is upon you, strong, to remove that infirmity. He said, you will have that pain no more. He said, you will have that pain no more. The Lord said, they've told you, you will have to manage it, but you won't manage it. He said, for I'm Jehovah Rapha, and I've healed you completely, completely. I've healed you completely. Lift your hands, everyone, and bless him. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you glory and I give you praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord is just, is just sending these words. There's somebody here. I, I, I see that you have a project ahead of you and you are looking for funding. You're looking for finances. You know, you've been at it for a couple of months now, but funding is not coming and you're becoming tired, almost giving up on it. But the Lord said to tell you that you are just one step away. <laughs> so the Lord said, don't give up. He said, for now is the day of your salvation. Amen. All right. Lift your hands, everyone, and bless the name of the Lord. Give him thanks and give him praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, I see somebody here. There's an arrow of the devil that has been shot against you. All right. And, um, you know, let me put it this way. Just say a portion of it so that we don't communicate fear. All right. The Lord said to tell you that I've raised a standard against it. And this is how you will know. The Lord said that the arrow was meant to kill you. But the Lord said, you have escaped. He said, as a snare from the bed, as a bed from the snare of the fowler, the Lord said to tell you, your soul is escaped. He said, your soul is escaped. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you're online, you believe in God for healing in your body, or you trust in God for any kind of miracle, or right, any kind of miracle, while we're doing that, for those of us here, do you have a prayer request? Can I give you just one minute to talk to the Lord? Something you want the Lord to do for you in this service. I want you to ask Him, wherever you are, for those of you online, you believe in God for healing, I love you to stretch forth your right hand towards me and look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke that infirmity. Out in the name of Jesus. Let the pain be gone from you. I command that BP to crash. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you stand up from that bed of affliction. Begin to walk now. Begin to move around. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Jesus has made you whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Father. In Jesus precious name. Amen. Now begin to wrap up your prayers. Just wrap up your prayers and say, Father, thank you for your answer prayers. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now I pray for you and please do say loud amen if you believe God answers prayers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call it dawn.
Whatever you have mounted before God today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, the living God, the Son of God, the one who called the servant, I decree that that prayer request has now become your testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is done. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Now, very quickly before you go, all right, the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? There's nothing that is as important as your soul. He said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, listen, the soul that sin it shall die. The destiny of every sinful soul is death. But thank God, because Jesus Christ has died that death. It means that by embracing what Jesus has done for you today, you can, you can escape death. And you can step into a newness of life. So if you are here, you are not born again. Jesus is not your Lord. You have not made him the Lord of your life yet. I love to pray for you. Wherever you have, put your hands above your head. I just want to pray for you very quickly. Jesus, Jesus is not yet your Lord. And you want him to be the Lord of your life. Wave your hands right above your head. You are not saved. You are not born again. You want Jesus to be your Lord. Wave your hands right above your head. You want to be born again. You want to be a child of God. Wave your hands. Anybody like that? Anybody like that? Wave your hands right above your head. God bless you. God bless you. I love you to make your way to the front. You want me to pray for you. You want me to lead you to Christ. It will be my pleasure this morning to pray for you. Wherever you are, come, come. God bless you. You know it. You're not born again. Jesus is not your Lord. But you want him to be your Lord this morning. Come on. Come forward wherever you are. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. I love to pray for you. I love to lead you to Christ. I love to pray for you. Wherever you are, make your way to the front. You're not born again. If Jesus comes today, you cannot beat your chest and say, I'm going with him. But you want that to change? You don't want to be lost? You want Jesus to rescue you? Come, 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 come. God bless you. Come, God bless you. Come, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Any other person coming? Come, 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 come. God bless you. God bless you. If you keep clapping, they will keep coming. If you keep clapping, they will keep coming. Wherever you are, just come. If you're still there, we love you to come. If you're still there, we love you to come. God bless you. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Pastors, please, can you help? You know, just like that, he made us do last week. Let's lead them personally to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, pastors. The Father's hands are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's hands are open wide While they're praying for them, I love you to just pray for them that the same grace that brought them, that grace will keep them. That none of them will be lost. None of them will miss their way again. But that by the grace of God, they are established, rooted, discipled, solid in the name of Jesus. That today will mark a turning point, that unique, life-transforming turning point that comes as a result of being born again. It will begin in their life today in the name of Jesus. They take roots downwards, they bear fruit upwards. The grace of God abounds to them for a walk with God, for a remarkable, exceptional, extraordinary walk with the Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What a joy, hallelujah. What a joy, hallelujah. What a joy, hallelujah. The Bible says that he that turneth a sinner from sin, he said, save it a soul from death. 
we give God all the praise. Can we rejoice and give God praise? For these ones have been turned from death. All right, God bless you. We love to have a word with you. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. We're excited that you made this choice today. God bless you. Please, I love you to go with, all right, please go with my brother there. All right, it will lead you to where we can have a word with you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, do we have testimonies before we take the communion? Testimonies, okay, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, Pastor, this is awesome. Uh, this is Daniel. Yesterday he said he had a very severe back pain, such that anytime he tries to turn, he will feel the pain. He even had to ask um, a fellow steward to assist him in massaging his back, but he was still feeling the pain. On his way home yesterday, he said, today's SMS, I'm coming here to receive my miracle. So when he came out and you laid hands on him, he believed that he had received his miracle. Then when he went back to his seat, you still gave a word that there's someone here, you have a back pain. God said you are healed. He went to the restroom to do the things he couldn't do before without feeling that pain. To the glory of God, Pastor, the pain is gone. He can't Hallelujah. feel it. <laughs> Every trace of wow. the pain is gone. Hallelujah. Can you wave your hands to Jesus and give him a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, it's Jesus that made you whole. The name still works. It still works. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, this is Omotolani. Our testimony is from GGC. Okay. So according to her, a couple of years, in fact, she can't remember, but she said it's, it's more than five years. She has this condition that whenever she feels a bit weak in her body, her eyes would itch her so badly it would turn red. And this symptom, she has carried it for years. So in GGC, she came out when daddy called for those who needed prayers for their eyes and all. She came out in faith. Pastor, from that time till now, she can't even have any memory of touching her eyes to the point of itching it. All the symptoms are gone. Wow. And she has been made whole. Hallelujah. Come on now, church. Can you wave your hands and shout hallelujah? <laughs> Glory to God. So for like how long have you had that? More than seven years. All right. It will, you, 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 when, once you feel tired, you start itching your eyes. Yes. And from Gigi City now, it has not happened. No, You've not had any cause. And you will never in the name of Jesus. Wave your hands to, to the Lord and shout hallelujah. God bless you. Any other one? Hallelujah. One more. All right. Glory to God. Amen. If you have testimony online too, I believe we have a number that you can use to send in your testimony of what the Lord Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Wow, glory to God. Yes, Pastor. Mary. Pastor, this is a major one. Hallelujah. I give God praise for it. This is Bola Rinwa. Earlier, sometimes last year, he had an accident, and three of the ligaments of his leg were ruptured. Wow. And um, two of them were reconstructed in surgery, and the surgeon mm. said the last one would take a natural healing. Mm. And, but for whatever reason, he has just been feeling a lot of pain on that particular leg. In fact, he said he has not been able to stand uh, in his words, he said, on full length. Mm. And what that means is that he's not able to stand on the two feet without the weight shifting mm. onto one leg and he's feeling very uncomfortable. The word of the Lord came in service today mm. and you described his case. Hallelujah. You know, he came into service with that pain, Hallelujah. radiating all around Hallelujah. and all of that. And the, 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 he went to the doctor sometime last week and the doctor said there might be a need for uh, a surgery on that third mm. ligament. But he said in his word today that he believes strongly that he would not need that surgery. Hallelujah. Again, you know, by way of something remarkable that the Lord has done, he said the pain has has reduced Glory greatly <laughs> and he believes that his healing has started. Come on, shout hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Indeed, the name of Jesus works, hallelujah. Which of your leg was it? It's my right knee. Your right knee. Yes, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Can I touch it? Father, thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bone to bone, ligament to ligament, reconstructed back exactly the way God designed it, with no scar. No leftover. In the name of Jesus. 
thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wow, it's done. Lift your hands, everyone, and bless him. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And you will come back and share your testimony. Amen. Wave your hands and bless him. Father, thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Pastor, this is Mrs. Oyewole. Yes. So she stood in for her friend. Uh, he has been having this severe pain on the left ear since yesterday. He sent her a message and she saw it this morning and felt since we're coming for SMS today that she can stand in for him. During the time when you called for healing and all, she was just praying for him and praying. She asked him to lay the hands on the air. She said just a few minutes after that, he said the pain has drastically reduced. <laughs> hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Which, which of the years? You, you're not sure which one exactly. Well, he, he said it was very painful. He was even considering going to the hospital already. All right. Yes. Thank you. Can I use you as a point of contact for him? Father, thank you. Because you are Lord over sickness. That's why we call you Jehovah Rapha. Thank you. Pain, be gone. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Never to return. In Jesus' name. Wave your hands and thank him. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Wave your hands to the Lord and bless him. I mean, God has done great things. Wave your hands and bless him. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. I want us to take communion, and um, we are going to be taking it in faith. The communion is not just an ordinary table. The Bible calls it the lost table. All right, it's a covenant thing. And every time we do it, we are provoking the covenant of our oneness with the Lord and Master. And every time we take it, we take the communion, something happens. All right, the fullness of the blessing of the gospel is established and confirmed in our lives. If it's healing, you have it. If it's prosperity, you have it. If it's a turnaround, you have it. If it's a breakthrough, you have it. And I want your faith to be jet towards it this morning in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus, we call this table blessed. We call it the table of the Lord. Everyone that takes from this table will have their eyes opened. They will have an encounter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ministers. Please, let's serve very quickly.
the bright morning so cheap. Jesus, you're the healer and deliverer. You, Jesus, yeah. Bless the Lord. Please let me know once we are done. Oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your heart. To me. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who has not gotten yet? Looks like we're done. Okay. All right. Please, you may rise to your feet as we do this together. Father, thank you for the privilege to partake of your body and your blood. Lord, I ask for every man and every woman under this umbrella. Thou partake of this communion today. Lord, let a new fountain of prosperity be opened up to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, take it and eat. says remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old behold I do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert 